Good afternoon. It's nice now that 5.30 in the evening is afternoon in Detroit. Uh, welcome to springtime as well. Uh, I'm Mark Kruman. I'm the founding director of the Center for the Study of Citizenship at Wayne State University. And I bring greetings on behalf of uh, President Alan Gilmore, uh, who uh, is unwell and unable to join us this evening, but sends his regrets. And on behalf of Wayne State University, I want to welcome you to Global Imaginaries, Individual Realities. We're here this evening thanks to an alliance between two great Midtown institutions, Wayne State University and its Center for the Study of Citizenship and the Detroit Institute of Arts. The DIA is a beautiful venue and for all of us at Wayne, uh, it's always a pleasure to be here. Indeed, faculty, staff, and students at the university uh, often consider the DIA to be part of Wayne State's uh, broadened campus. Tonight, we'll listen to the distinguished scholar Hamid Dabashi moderate a discussion of, uh, between the artist Shireen Nishat about her stunning exhibit, which if you haven't seen, you must see, and Nobel Peace Prize laureate Shireen Ibadi. It's not every day that we have the privilege of hearing from a Nobel laureate, especially one who has shown such courage in furthering the cause of human rights and freedom who has refused to back down in the face of threats and oppression, who has dared to speak up for those who are powerless. Her work reminds us of how fortunate we are. And the work of these two remarkable women, Dr. Ibadi and Ms. Nashat, is related. I'm reminded of a statement made by one of the founders of the United States, John Adams, who said, I must study politics and war that my sons, and I'll add my daughters, uh, may have liberty to study mathematics and philosophy. My sons and daughters ought to study mathematics and philosophy to give their children a right to study painting, poetry, music, architecture, statuary, tapestry, and porcelain. Adams was talking about freedom, freedom of human expression, made possible by the courage of those who are willing to work and fight for the basic freedoms that protect us all, and that allow us to pursue our dreams wherever they may take us. The DIA is a cultural place where freedom of expression is celebrated, where all around us we can see the highest expressions of artistic and human freedom. This makes it an ideal setting for tonight's program. And the Center for the Study of Citizenship, a global leader in the study and promotion of citizenship, is an ideal partner of the DIA. The center's work is predicated upon the belief that vital communities require active, engaged citizens, citizens like our speakers here this evening. I want to thank the DIA for the spectacular lecture series of which the center is a partner global imaginaries, individual realities, and I want to thank and also introduce Becky Hart, the Associate Curator of the James Pearson Duffy Department of Contemporary Art uh, for her extraordinary leadership in putting this uh, exhibit together as, as well as being a simply fantastic collaborator. It's my great pleasure and honor to introduce to you uh, Dr. Rebecca Hart.
There's nothing like earning a doctorate in just an instant, is there? <laughs> I'm Becky Hart, and it is my pleasure to welcome everybody here on, on behalf of the Detroit Institute of Arts and Friends of Modern and Contemporary Art. It has been a wonderful series. I, Mark has been a fabulous uh, partner in this. And we're just thrilled to ha be able to present a, a lecture series in this evening's event to you. In an essay commissioned by the Animating Democracy po Project in 2003, Detroit-based activist and cultural worker Grace Lee Boggs wrote, these are times that try our souls. Each of us needs to undergo a tremendous philosophical and spiritual transformation. Each of us needs to be awakened to a personal and compassionate recognition of the inseparable interconnection between our minds, hearts, and bodies, between our physical and psychic selves, between, between ourselves and the other selves in our neighborhood, our country, and the world. This evening, we are privileged to welcome three individuals who live by Bog's imperative, that in their lives they reflect and pro proclaim the interconnectedness between who they are and the world at large. Sharina Boddy, 2003 Nobel Peace Prize laureate, studied law at the University of Tehran and was appointed a judge in 1969. By 1975, she had risen to become the president of the court of the city of Tehran, the first woman to serve in such a position. After the 1979 Islamic Revolution, all, men, all women were dismissed from the court and assigned as clerical duties. Soon it was learned that they had great capacity and they were made experts of the court. These actions prompted Dr. Abadi to request an early retirement. In 1992, she obtained a degree, a, a license to practice law and established a private practice. There, she accepted cases for civil and personal rights. Her keen legal mind devised arguments that used the same Islamic laws that supported, even encouraged atrocity, and used those same laws to win justice for the victims of those laws. In 2003, as I said, she won the Nobel Peace Prize for her efforts to promote democracy and human rights, especially the rights of women and children. In 2009, her prize and assets were seized by the Republic of Iran. Since that event, Dr. Abadi has lived outside of Iran. In addition to her many significant awards, Mrs. Abadi is the author of numerous books and essays about Islamic and Iranian law and human rights, as well as two popular books, Iran Awakening and the Golden Gate. Dr. Dabashi is the Hagop Kavorkian Professor of Iranian Studies and Comparative Literature at Columbia University in New York. Considered the preeminent Iranian intellectual working today, Dabashi has authored over 25 books and contributed or edited numerous others. His most popular works, perhaps you know them, are Theology of Discontent, Iran, A People Interrupted, and most recently, The World of Persian Literary Humanism. In addition, Dr. Dabashi is a commentator for Al Jazeera. Shireen Nishat is the subject of the mid-career retrospectives that open today at the DIA. Her artwork explores issues of gender, identity, and power. Since her studio practice began in 1993, she has received wide international attention, including many prizes. In 2010, Nishat was named the Artist of the Decade by Huffington Post for, quote, making her art chronically relevant to all, increasing to, to an increasingly glo global culture for reflecting the ideological war being waged between Islam and the secular world over matters of gender, religion, and democracy, and because the impact of her work that transcends the realms of art in reflecting the most vital and far-reaching struggle to assert human rights. It's my pleasure to welcome Dr. Abadi to the stage now for her address. 
Her um, words will be tra simultaneously translated by uh, Dr. Sh Shireen Irshadi. So help me welcome Dr. Irbadi. خانم هاگایان خوش آمدید امیدوارم که یک شنبه خوبی داشته باشید با آفتاب زیبای دیترویت و لذتی که از دیدن نمایشگاه نمایشگاه خانم شیرین نشاط بردید hey, ladies and gentlemen good evening i hope you've had a nice sunday you have enjoyed the sun in detroit today and you have uh, enjoyed visiting the stunning exhibit of Ms. Shirin Nishat's work. As Masulin Muse Detroit Sepaskozaram, Kenemoyeshkohi Baroye Benemoyesh Tarovardane, Korhoye Yekias, Bo Arzestanin Horan, Manhoyemo, Honom and Nishat Tatib Dodan, Eva Shomorobo, Kesmatias. And I want to thank the organizers of the Detroit Institute of Art for putting together the exhibition of the works of Ms. Shireen Ashad uh, to introduce you to one of our best artists who work in the uh, field of culture in Iran. Mohel Hassam ke sohbat hai khodam ro ba آماری که مؤسسه گالوب اخیرا منتشر کرده شروع کنم. I would like to begin uh, with the statistics that have been published by the Gallup Institute recently. مؤسسه گالوب ادعا کرده در یک آمارگیری که از مردم ایران به عمل آورده اکثریت مردم با برنامه‌های دولت در زمینه انرژی هسته‌ای موافق هستند و همچنین در زمینه ارتباط ایران و آمریکا شست بیش از 60 درصد مردم ایران مقصر رو دولت آمریکا می‌دانند. The Gallup Institute has published statistics that have been gathered from the people of Iran and it claims that over 60% of the people in Iran uh, believe that the uh, country at fault regarding the relations between Iran and the United States is the United States. And besides, the majority of the people of Iran agree with the nuclear program in Iran. in Omar as it's surprising for an organization like Gallup to come up with these statistics. Zero ke dolat Iran ejaze vurud amargaran ro be Iran nemidahat va masese Gallup modai shode ke az tariq telefon va internet be mardom Iran dasasi peda karde va in sal ha ro matra karde. Since the government of Iran does not provide visas for the people who would like to ask the questions to enter Iran, the Gallup Institute has claimed uh, that by use over the internet and telephone, they have been uh, able to gather the information. مردم جرأت نمی کنند آنچه که در قلبشون میگذره پشت تلفن برای یک بیگانه بیان کنند and since there's censorship of the internet in iran and also telephone conversations are controlled people do not dare to state what they believe in their heart to a stranger on the phone و همچنین مجددن مؤسسه گالوب آمار دیگری منتشر کرده و در اون قید کرده که طبق آمارهایی که گرفته بیشترین دشمنان آمریکا در پاکستان و در ایران هستند. Also the Gallup Institute has published a different set of statistics stating 
that the most number of the enemies of the United States are in Iran and Pakistan. و من متعجب هستم که چگونه یک مؤسسه معتبری مانند گالوب یک چنین آمارهای غلطی رو بیرون میده. And I'm surprised that a, an institution like Gallup, with its reputation, would publish such statistics. مردم ایران با برنامه هسته دولت مخالف هستند و معتقدند که دولت باید سی قنیسازی اورانیوم رو فوراً متوقف کند. The, the people of Iran oppose the nuclear program of the government and they believe that the government has to stop and halt enrichment program right away. مردم ایران دشمن آمریکا نیستند. The people of Iran are not enemies of America. زمانی که فاجعه 11 سپتامبر اتفاق افتاد، جوانان ایرانی مراسم یاد بود برای کشته شدگان 11 سپتامبر گرفتند. به خاطرتون میاد؟ I hope you all remember that at the time that the drastic events of September 11th happened, the young people in Iran held a vigil and memorial for the victims of 9/11. مردم ایران حکومت ایران رو قبول ندارند و سال هاست که برای دموکراسی و حقوق بشر در ایران مبارزه می کنند. The people of Iran do not accept the government of Iran and have been working for human rights and democracy and fighting for it for years. و انتظار ما از مدیای بین المللی خصوصا مدیای آمریکا این است که چهره درستی از مردم ایران به نمایش در بیاورید. And our expectation from the international media, specifically the U.S. media, is to depict the correct face of the Iranian people. حکومت ایران معرف فرهنگ ایرانی نیست. The government of Iran does not represent the culture of Iran. مردم ایران رو فقط با عمل کرده اشتباه یک حکومت غیر دموکراتیک در سی و چهار سال مورد قضاوت قرار ندید. Don't judge the people of Iran because of the wrongful actions of a non-democratic government during the past 34 years. ایران تمدن بسیار قدیمی بیش از سه هزار سال تمدن داره که شما قسمتی از اون رو در این موزه میبینید. Iran has an old civilization, a civilization older than 3,000 years ago, and parts of it are depicted in this museum. Man va hunarmand arzeshmand khanum shirin nishad har do az tabaqe mutawassit irani hasti. Myself and Ms. Shirin Nishad, the well-known Iranian artist, are both from middle-class Iranians. Most of the people of a society belong to the middle class, so by our behavior and actions, you can uh, determine uh, what the Iranian society is like. And why is it that the people of Iran protest their government? The government of Iran systematically violates human rights. دولت ایران به کنوانسیون های بین المللی حقوق مدنی سیاسی و کنوانسیون بین المللی حقوق مدنی و اجتماعی پیوسته ولی کن مکررن مفاد اون رو نقض میکنه. The government of Iran has joined the social and political covenants and also the economic and civil covenants. However, it violates the regulations uh, constantly. مهمترین اصل در حقوق بشر برابری انسان هاست ولی کن این برابری بعد از انقلاب 1979 در ایران به شدت صدمه خورده. 
the most important principle of human rights is equality of human beings. However, after the revolution of 1979 in Iran, this principle has been harmed. بعد از انقلاب اسلامی در سال 1979 قوانین تبعیض‌آمیز زیادی علیه زنان به تصویب رسید که من چند تای اونها رو برای شما بیان می‌کنم. After the 1979 revolution in Iran, discriminatory laws against women were passed, and I will give you a few examples here. به موجب قانون ارزش جان زن نیمی از ارزش جان مرد یعنی اگر من و برادرم با هم بریم به خیابون و در اثر تصادف اتومبیل یا در یک منازعه زخمی بشیم و یا بمیریم خسارتی که به برادرم تعلق میگیره دو برابر خسارتی است که قانونا به من میدهند The life of a woman is worth half of that of a man This means that if me and my brother go on the street and get involved in a battery or are hit by a car or are involved in an accident, the compensation paid to my brother pursuant to the law is twice as much as the compensation paid to me. Pursuant to law, testimony of two women in court equals testimony of one man. یک مرد میتونه چهار همسر بگیره بدون عذر موجه زنش رو هر وقت که بخواد طلاق بده اما طلاق گرفتن برای زن بسیار دشوار و گاه غیر ممکنه. A man can marry four wives, can divorce his wife as he wishes uh, without any excuse, but divorce is very difficult for women, sometimes even impossible. اینها نمونه های از قوانین ضد زن بودند که حکومت جمهوری اسلامی به تصویب رسوند و زنان ایران مخالف این قوانینند. These laws were a few examples of misogynistic laws passed by the government of the Islamic Republic of Iran and the women of Iran opposed such laws. و شما این مخالفت رو به صورت‌های گوناگون در مورد آثار زنان ایران می‌بینید. به صورت شعر، به صورت نمایشنامه، به صورت نقاشی، فیلم. And these kinds of oppositions are, can be found in the works of Iranian women in the form of paintings, in the form of movies, in the form of writings and poetry. و شما اگر با دقت یک بار دیگر کارهای خانم نشات رو نگاه کنید، اون موقع درد و رنج یک زن ایرانی رو از این همه تبعیض درک می‌کنید. And if you look at the work of Ms. Shirin Nishat for a second time precisely, you will understand the depth of the pain and the hurt that Iranian women are undergoing. نابرابری فقط بر اساس جنسیت نیست، بر اساس مذهب نیست. نابرابری زیادی وجود دارد. این equality does not only pertain to gender, این equality on the basis of religion exists as well. به موجب قانون اساسی مذهب رسمی شیعه است سایر فرق اسلامی و همچنین یهودی مسیحی و زرتشتی نیز به رسمیت شناخته شدند. Pursuant Uh, to the constitution, the official religion of Iran is Shiism Islam, but other branches of Islam and also Judaism, Christianity, and Zoroastrianism are recognized. In bedon manos ke sayer adyan dar Iran be rasmiyat shanakhte nemishan va hich no haqqi nadoran. This means that other religions are not officially recognized in Iran and do not enjoy any rights. در ایران سی و سیصد و پنجاه هزار بهایی زندگی می کنند که از کلیه حقوق مدنی و سیاسی محروم هستند. حتی از سال 1979 به این طرف نتوانستند وارد دانشگاه بشند. In Iran, approximately 350,000 Bahais live. 
They are deprived of all civil and political rights. Even from 1979, the beginning of the revolution in Iran, they have not been able to enter the universities. بین اسلام و سایر ادیانی که در قانون اساسی به رسمیت شناخته شده هم تبعیض قانونی وجود دارد. There is also legal discrimination between Islam and other religions that have been officially recognized in the constitution. از جمله اینکه بسیاری از مشاغل مانند وزارت، مانند قضاوت، مانند ریاست جمهوری رو این غیر مسلمان ها نمی توانند احتدار بشن. For example, positions such as presidency, judgeships, or ministerial positions cannot be held by non-Muslims. و یا این که به موجب قانون اگر در بین ورسه متوفا فردی مسلمان باشد می تواند همه ارس رو ببرد. Or, for example, if there is a Muslim among the heirs in the case of a deceased person, that Muslim person is entitled to the inheritance. Yani, agar yek Masihi Irani fought bokone, va farzan seto pesar doshte bache, khali tabi ist ke amvalish bayasi beine pesar ho taksim bache. This means that, for example, if an Iranian Christian man dies. and he has three sons, his inheritance should be divided among his sons. اما اگر یکی از بستگان این مسیحی مثلا برادر زادش قبلا مسلمان شده باشه همه ارث رو به او میدن و پسرها از ارث محروم میشوند چون که مسیحی هستند. But if one of the relatives of such person, for example his nephew, Uh, converts to Islam, then all of the inheritance goes to the person, to the nephew who has converted to Islam, and his sons are deprived from receiving his inheritance. Discrimination on the basis of religion is more expansive than what I said. Censor dar Iran besyar shadide. Censorship in Iran is very strong. به گزارش سازمان گزارشگران بدون مرز ایران بیشترین تعداد ژورنالیست ها را در زندان داره. Pursuant to a report of Reporters Without Borders, Iran has the most number of journalists in prison. و همچنین به عنوان دشمن اینترنت شناخته شده. And it has been recognized as the enemy of the internet. در بسیاری از مواقع دولت سرعت اینترنت رو تعمدان پای میاره که قابل استفاده نباشه. In many instances, the government reduces the speed of the internet so that it cannot be used. و بسیاری از ایمیل ها کنترل میشه. And numerous emails are controlled. و من بسیار متاسفم که تکنولوژی کنترل موبایل و اینترنت رو که شرکت های بزرگ غربی به دولت ایران فروختند. And I'm very sorry to say that the devices used for the control of the internet and mobile phones have been sold by western big corporations to Iran. ما با حمله نظامی و یا تحریم اقتصادی ایران مخالفیم. We are against a military attack or economic sanctions against Iran. برای اینکه اینها وضعیت مردم را بدتر میکنه. Because these will hurt the status of people and worsen them. اما انتظار داریم که دیکتاتورها رو کمک نکنید و دنیا را برای اونها کشکتر کنید. But we expect that you not support the dictators and make the war world smaller for them. Man, hamvare be jaye tahrim ekhtisadi Iran tahrim siyasi ro pishnat kada. I always uh, propose political sanctions against Iran instead of economic sanctions. 
و منظور من از تحریم سیاسی تحریم هایی است که حکومت رو تضعیف میکنه اما به مردم صدمه نمیزنه and what i mean by political sanctions are sanctions that weaken the government but do not hurt the people یکی از این تحریم ها تحریم ماهواره ای حکومت ایران است one of these sanctions can be the satellite sanctions against iran دولت ایران تلویزیون های به زبان های بین المللی روی ساتلایت های اروپایی و آمریکایی برای جهان پخش میکنه که در این ساتلایت ها تبلیغات دروغ خودش رو بیان میکنه و نفرت پراکنی علیه سایر کشورها میکنه The government of Iran produces programs in different languages and broadcasts such programs to other countries. It's all propaganda and it's all dispersing of lies and enmity against other nations. Bayasi istifad az mahvareha ro baraye hukumat Iran mamnu bekonid. We have to prohibit the use of satellites for the government of Iran. و همچنین دولت آمریکا اعلام بکند با تصویب قوانینی که اگر ساتلایت های اروپایی و یا آسیایی هم به دولت ایران سرویس بدن دیگه حق فعالیت در آمریکا رو ندارند. این باعث میشه که بلنگوهای تبلیغاتی رژیم قطع بشه. And the government of the United States should, through regulation, stop corporations that provide service to Iranians, be it European or Asian corporations that provide satellite um, access to the Iranians uh, and sanction those corporations so that they cannot work in the United States. This way we can stop all the propaganda and lies of the government of Iran. مردم ایران سال هاست که برای دسترسی به دموکراسی فعالیت می کنند. The people of Iran have been active to access democracy for years. حمله نظامی به ایران باعث می شود که حکومت به بهانه حفظ امنیت ملی بتواند بیش از بیش آزادی خواهان را سرکوب کند. A military an attack will result in the repression of the freedom fighters because the government will use national security as an excuse in this regard. Tanha rah hal hukumati manande hukumat Iran ke be qawanin bein al melali etnai nemi konad an as ke be vasile mardom Iran saqet beshe. The only solution for a government like the government of Iran that disregards all international regulations is to be toppled by the people of Iran. و مطمئن باشید اگر در ایران یک حکومت مردمی با انتخابات آزاد به قدرت برسه بسیاری از مسائل بین المللی ایران حل میشه. And you can rest assured that if an elected government uh, with free elections is elected, most of the international issues with Iran will be resolved. For example, the issue of nuclear energy. energy حتی اگر برای مصارف صلح‌آمیز باشه برای زیست محیطی ایران مضره. The people of Iran disagree with the government of Iran when it comes to the nuclear program because they believe that even if it is for peaceful purposes it's not good for the environment. ایران دومین ذخیره گاز جهان را داره، نفت بسیاری داره و علاوه بر آن خورشید فراوانی و ما می توانیم از اینها استفاده بکنیم و نیازی به نیروگاه‌های هسته‌ای نداریم. Iran has the second largest uh, natural gas reserves. There is a lot of oil in Iran. 
and there is a lot of sun in Iran. We do not need nuclear energy. از سوی دیگر ایران روی خط زلزله است و هر لحظه امکان تکرار فاجعه فوکوشیما میره. On the other hand, Iran is located on earthquake faults and there is any minute the possibility of a second Fukushima. مردم ایران نمیخواهند منزوی باشند و میخواهند در تعامل با مردم دنیا از جمله آمریکایی ها باشند. The people of Iran do not want to be isolated. They want to be friends with the people of the world, specifically with the Americans. حدود پنج میلیون ایرانی در آمریکا زندگی می کند. شما فکر کنید اگر هر کدام از اینها حداقل سه یا چهار دوست یا فامیل در ایران داشته باشند، چه تعداد مردم ایران؟ مایل به ایجاد رابطه با آمریکا هستند. Approximately 5 million Iranians live in America. Just imagine if each of them have four relatives or close friends in Iran, how many people would prefer a better relationship between Iran and the United States? از سالها قبل دانشجویان ما دانشگاه های آمریکایی رو برای ادامه تحصیل انتخاب کردند اینجا آمدند و شما با گشاد دستی علم خودتون رو در اختیار جوانان وطن من قرار دادید. Uh, from years ago university students from Iran have come to your universities in America and Americans have generously provided them with their knowledge with my uh, with their knowledge to my co-patriots شهروندا ایرانیانی که در کشور شما زندگی می کنند شهروندان خوبی برای شما بودند در تجارت موفق بودند در دانشگاه ها استادای خوبی برای شما بودند اونها شهر دوستان و شهروندان خوب شما هستند ایرانیانی که در کشور شما زندگی می کنند expertise in this country. They have been professors, they've been very successful in trade, and they have been successful in general. For years, there has been friendship and a cultural relationship between the people of Iran and the people of the United States. Please don't pay attention to the non-scientific statistics of the Gallup Institute. Our friendship will continue. Long live the friendship of Iran and the United States. Uh, they're preparing backstage right now, and in just a moment, the curtains will open, and Hami Dabashi will lead a discussion between Shirin Nishat and Shirin Abadi. And it's just a real privilege to have this kind of, uh, this group together. I don't know whether we can appreciate that this weekend has been a real homecoming for many Iranians around the world. Uh, Hamid Dabashi, Susan Daim, Shireen Nishat, uh, Sh Shireen Abadi, they haven't been together in a very long time and this is quite a treat for them. So thank you and welcome. So I soon came to the conclusion that they had invited me uh, for a different reason. And the different reason had to do with the fact that this is these two distinguished ladies have been preoccupied with the atrocities of the men that have been caused on this planet Earth, and I'm here to represent that gender. <laughs> so I'm here to rep represent particularly the bearded men, particularly white bearded men, who have given us this status of the world. So for the first time in my academic career, I came to the conclusion that I'm invited to a place not for the might of my intellect, but for my look. 
It's quite an accomplishment. Uh, as you just saw from Ms. Abati's uh, extraordinary speech, Iranian women do not need to be represented. They represent themselves. Iranian women do not need to be free. They can free themselves. And in addition to the horrors perpetrated on 75 million Iranian men and women, uh, right now Iranians are also suffering under uh, severe economic sanctions, uh, conditioned by, both by the geopolitics of the region and initiated by the United States and its regional allies, as well as constant threat of war. And as Ms. Ebadi has said, both on this occasion and other occasions, women and children are the primary victims of any condition of war, as we can see in Afghanistan and Iraq. Now, I thought the best way for me to, uh, to engage Ms. Ebadi and uh, Ms. Nishad in conversation is uh, simply to ask Ms. Ebadi to reflect on Shirin Nishad's uh, work, because uh, as you know, Mr. Badi, Shirin Nishat's work has come to fruition mostly outside Iran. And uh, despite the fact that she is partially known, uh, but not completely inside Iran, now you have had an opportunity to, uh, uh, to see a, a spectrum of her work. And I wonder what are your thoughts as a human rights activist, as a, a person who has dedicated her life to freedom, what are your immediate reflections on what Shirin has done over the last three decades? در ابتدا مایل هستم که عنوان بکنم خانم نشاد در ایران کاملا شناخته شدن به برکت اینترنت برای اینکه الان دیگه اصری نیست که مردم از هم بی اطلاع باشن First, I want to state that Ms. Nishad is very well known in Iran, and we owe that to the internet because uh, at this time, we owe that to the internet, and everyone knows that the internet brings information to everyone. And also, her work has inspired many of our young people. از جمله تابلوی زیبایی شان دارند که دستهایی را نشون میده مال یک زن که روش مطالبی نوشته شده. For example, she has a very nice uh, art piece which shows the hands of a woman that has uh, been written on with calligraphy. و با اقتباس و الهام از این تابلو در تظاهرات فمینیستی زن بچه های ما یک پوستری رو درست کردن که دست یک زن و مرد پلوی همه و روی یکی نوشته شده زن مساویس با مرد And uh, in the feminist demonstrations that we had uh, the young people who were working on the artistic issues came up with a poster which has the hand of a woman and the hand of a man. On one, it's written woman. On the other, man. And there is the equal sign in between. And the same thing that I was writing in the first time, was the statement that the law of the law of the law and as I stated in my speech, it is not only through writing that opposition to oppression is expressed, but the voice of the artists are stronger. And one of these loud voices is the voice of Shirin Nishat. Shirin, I, I want to return the question now to you. Over the last 30 years, uh, uh, your work has been uh, primarily, if not exclusively, preoccupied with the question of women, their liberties, their thoughts, their feelings. And especially in your feature film, uh, Women Without Men, 
uh, you pay very exclusive and detailed visual attention to four fictional women uh, in, from the work of Sh uh, Sharon Shaparsipur. I wonder how do you react to the accomplishments and the presence of uh, Miss Abadi, who is a real person and a real fighter sitting right next to you? What is the difference? Um, actually, I was thinking as she was speaking, um, and I admire her a great deal um, because I think the distinction between how I operate as opposed to how she operates is that um, it's been impossible for me to separate my personal angst and crisis as a human being from my work, um, where she could um, basically devote herself to issues that exclusively involves others. So the very basis of my work is really is the human, the more existential issues that happens to be um, due to the fact that I'm Iranian and I'm Iranian woman and I have had a certain life experiences and therefore I frame issues that concerns others. But I've never felt um, it's been adequate for me to be considered as a speaker or the voice or someone who fights for the human rights. I, I just can't. Uh, I would like to be able to take such a title, but I couldn't. Um, so I, I would say that uh, my work, and I think this goes back to being an artist, is their imagination is thrives out of something very urgent and personal. And if you don't have that, you're not capable of being imaginative because then it becomes very biased. And, um, and I see that in a lot of other Iranian artists, writers, etc. So I think that's a different way we function. As Mr. Wadi, I wanted to ask you to use your own example as an accomplished uh, judge and uh, human rights activist, and the example of Shirin Nishad as a globally celebrated artist. If we use these two examples as what Iranian women are capable of on a global scale, what would you have to say, or what would you say, to your American and European audience who have a certain kind of cliche conception of what an Iranian woman or a Muslim woman uh, would look like and, and act like. You have been out of Iran for quite a long time and you would face American audiences, European audiences. Uh, what are your own uh, perceptions in terms of the discrepancy that exists between the reality of uh, Iranian and by extension Muslim women and the uh, the standard cliches with which uh, the society is perceived this world. متاسفانه برخی از مدیه ها تصویر درستی از زن ایرانی ارائه نمی دن. Unfortunately, um, some of the media do not depict the correct picture of Iranian women. Um, در اکثر تلویزیون ها یا روزنامه ها هر وقت صحبت از زن ایرانی میشه یک موجودی که پی، پیچیده در یک پارچه سیاهی به نام چادر هست و خشبین مشتهای گره کرده که شعار میده مرگ بر این مرگ بر آن mostly when Iranian women are depicted on television or even in press you see uh, the body of a woman wrapped in a dark cloth, a black cloth, and with their hands up, with their fists, and it's like they're shouting, or you hear them shouting, death to this and death to that. Amma, hamun tori ke man dar sohanroni ham goftam, man va shirin, har do to az tabaqe mutawassat jamae miayim, yani tabaqe ke bishtarin afrad dar un jaa daran. Shom az roi ma mitunid qazawat bekonid. But as I stated in my speech, the uh, majority of the people of a society belong to the middle class. So by, by looking at us, by seeing our behavior and our actions, you can tell how other people would act as well. Over 60% of the university students in Iran are female. زنان ایران بیش از 50 ساله که حق رأی به دست آوردن به پارلمان رفتن. And the women of Iran gained the right to vote over 50 years ago 
and they have been elected to the parliaments. تعداد کثیری از اساتید دانشگاه های ما زنند. Numerous uh, university professors in Iran are female. مایل هستم یک خاطره از یکی از موکلین خودم رو برای شما تعریف کنم تا بدانید که زنان ایران چگونه مبارزه می کنند. And I want to tell you a story of one of my clients so that you will understand how the women in Iran fight. موکل من ژورنالیست جوانی بود که به خاطر نوشتن چند مقاله در اعتراض به قوانین تبیزامیز تحت تعقیب دادستان قرار گرفت. Uh, my client was a young female journalist. She had written a few articles regarding discriminatory laws and was prosecuted by the prosecutor, by the prosecution. و روزی که برای تحقیقات می رفتیم دادستان یک وسیقه سنگینی براش تعیین کرد گفت بس این رو بذاری تا اینکه تا روز محاکمه آزاد باشی. And after all the investigation, the prosecutor requested a very heavy bail and said that if you deposit the money, then we can release you. او گفتش که من این پول رو ندارم و اگرم داشتم نمیدادم برای اینکه بیگناه هستم. من فقط میتونم قول بدم که برای روز محاکمه خواهم آمد. She said, I don't have this kind of money and even if I had it, I wouldn't have... Uh, deposited it because I believe that I'm innocent and the only thing that I can do is that I will promise to be there, there for trial. But But the prosecutor said that if you don't deposit the money, I'm going to throw you in prison, and I'm going to throw you in prison where the worst criminal women, criminals are kept, and you will regret that. You will come and ask me to please release you then. And my client said, okay, we'll see. همونطوری که گفته بود بر خلاف از قانونم سوء استفاده کرد و این رو دستور داد که در یک بدترین قسمت که زنانی که با جرائم سنگین در اونجا هستن زندانی کنند که این در اونجا بیشتر عذاب بکشه and the prosecutor even broke the law and sent her to the worst kind of women criminals women who had committed very serious crimes so that she would be tortured there she would be under a lot of pressure این دختر جوان وقتی که رفت زندان اونجا با زنان زندانی صحبت کرده بود و متوجه شده بود که تعدادی از این زنها بدون وکیل اینجا هستند و دو روز بعد به دفتر من زنگ زد گفتش که خانم بادی اگه میشه چند تا وکیل رایگان واسه ما بفرست که اینا از اینا دفاع کنن This young girl had talked to many of the women who were kept in prison and found out that many of them had not had representation So she called my office and said, many of these women uh, do not have attorneys. And if you can, please send them attorneys oh, who could work uh, pro bono and defend them. We did this and the women who were the lawyers were all able to help their lawyers to get a little bit of a chance to get a little bit of a chance. And we did appoint uh, pro bono attorneys and helped the women who had difficulties in uh, defending their cases. And During the next week, she called back and she said, "There are no, uh, there's no library in this prison. So ask each person who can donate books to donate five books." And we did that, and we got a number of books in the prison. So there was a pretty good library set up in there. Evabat in که سایر زنهای زندانی متوجه شدن که این به نفع اونها کار میکنه یواش یواش باش دوست شدن و این برای اونها کلاس حقوق زن گذاشته بود. Then, uh, when the 
women who were criminals found out that she's working uh, for them and in their interest. Uh, they became friendly with her, and she set up classes on women's rights for these women. <laughs> حدود چه روز بعد بود که رئیس زندان سراسیمه رفت پیش دادستان گفت بابا اینه بیرونش میارین همه زنان رو فیمونیز کرده الان شورش میکنن It was approximately 40 days later that the, that the warden of the prison went to the prosecutor and said, please get rid of this woman she has made everyone a feminist they're gonna have an uprising in the <laughs> نظیر این دختر جوان ما بسیار داریم و به همین دلیل است که معتقدم دموکراسی به زودی با دستان زنان به ایران خواهد آمد. There are many many young girls in Iran who are similar to this young journalist and I am sure that democracy will be brought to Iran with the hands of the capable women of Iran. So, Shinjan, as you see, it is important for our audience to realize that it is not just the jewel of the crown, as it were, uh, of uh, Mr. Badi, who in Detroit talks so valiantly about freedom and democracy, but even our uh, sisters and brothers inside the dungeons of the Islamic Republic, they are uh, actively involved in promoting the cause of uh, democracy. I want to change the question now to your work. Uh, as you well know, uh, the Iranian cinema of the last 30 years has been a spectacular global uh, success. You know many of these filmmakers, you have, uh, many of them are your personal friends, you have used them in your own work. When you look at the work of a filmmaker like Jafar Panahi, who is under a prison sentence, and yet under prison sentence, and not, uh, while being banned to make film, he continues to make film, and his films are screened globally. Uh, in what way do you think your own work is connected to what happens in, inside your own artistic? Well, if you allow me, I, I wanted to also um, make a reference to what um, Ms. Abadi said um, and the question that makes me think about my own work, uh, whether in photography or in video, for example, in every one of the characters has been somewhat rebellious. Um, a woman who confronts and breaks the rules, whether it's a break, um, the rules of music or the authority, or basically always running away from um, being a conformist. And, and I think that uh, I support her in, in the way that I also see Iranian women in that way, always confrontational. And in a way, it helps to neutralize the kind of stereotypes that exist among Americans and Westerners at large, that all Muslim women, Iranian women are very submissive and victim. And I think in my own work, even though allegorically, I've also tried to reiterate uh, what her impression is. Um, it's very interesting what you said, I mean, this question about um, being an artist from Iran, whether you're living inside or outside, um, you're confronting various problems. Uh, if you are in Iran, like you said, Mr. Panahi is under house arrest. He has been forbidden to write or make films, which he continues to make. Um, there are all kinds of issues that not only him, but all artists deal with. But then there are people like me who are outside, but they're confronting different kind of issues. Life in exile, separation from family and place of birth, uh, all things that are basic human rights. Um, and, and that, so we pay dearly, I think, for our work, uh, for the choice that we make, for the subjects that we work with. And we both face certain problematics, whether we are inside or outside. But I guess at the same time, I think we feel really empowered because even though we face a lot of issues, we feel like our voices are heard, we have a great audience outside of just arts, world and just the Western audience. We have the Iranian community. Uh, we feel that we have a power to inspire, mobilize, provoke people. Um, so I think with even Panahi, he feels that he has a lot of power with all this 
limitation that is being given to him. And that's a very unique situation to be, where I think it's very unusual for Western audience, artists to understand that while your hands are tied, you can be so extremely imaginative and so powerful. And, and I think that's the reality of being an Iranian artist today. Again, whether you're living in Iran or outside, it's, it's a challenge. Mr. Mahdi, let me now ask another question. Uh, it has been quite, how many years have you been outside Iran and in the US and Europe? Man, as June 2009, بعد از انتخابات ریاست جمهوری که مردم به نتایج انتخابات اعتراض کردند و این باعث کشته شدن تعداد زیادی و دستگیری تعداد زیادی شد از اون تاریخ به بعد من متاسفانه دیگه نتوانستم به ایران برگردم um, I left Iran uh, in June of 2009 after the the fact that people opposed to the results of the elections and many were killed and many were mistreated, I could not go back to my country. So over the last, but this June would be four years, Mr. Vadi, that you have been outside Iran and by virtue of traveling extensively both in US and in Europe and in Asia in uh, other parts of the world. Uh, as you well know, patriarchy is not exclusive to Iran or to Muslims. Uh, when it comes to patriarchal and misogynistic attitude, there is enough uh, blame to go around the globe. In what way have you been able to connect the plight of Iranian women and the question of women's rights in Iran to other uh, conditions, other similar conditions in other cultures and contexts, particularly in US and Europe where, uh, where you live? فرهنگ به در سالاری متاسفانه در همه جا وجود داره مونتا در هر کشور به نوعی خودش رو نشون میده um, Unfortunately the patriarchal culture exists all over however the examples of are different مثلا در اروپا و در آمریکا و در کشورهای غربی قوانین حقوق برابر برای زن میشناسد اما متاسفانه زنها امکان استفاده از حقوق برابر رو کمتر پیدا میکنند. For example, in European and American countries, the laws recognize equal rights for women and men, but women do not get the opportunity to use those equal rights. بالوان مثال در کشور شما آمریکا حقوق زن و مرد در قانون برابره. For example, in your country, in America, the rights of women and men are equal in laws. اما به من بگید که چند نفر زن در کابینه دولت هست و چند نفر مرد. But tell me how many uh, secretaries of uh, different departments exist in the administration of the government and how many men. رؤسای احزاب سیاسی مردن یا زن؟ The heads of political parties or men or women. رؤسای بانک های بزرگ و کارپوریشن های بزرگ زنان یا مرد؟ Heads of big corporations and big banks or women or men. آیا زن ها لیاقت کمتری دارن یا کمتر درس خوندن؟ مسلما نه. Is it that women are less meritorious or less educated? No. برابری می‌بینید فرهنگ پدر سالار اینجا چگونه عمل می‌کنه؟ Therefore, you can see how the patriarchal culture works here. در کشور من ایران که یک قدم عقبتر هم هستیم برای اینکه قوانین هم به ما ظلم میکنه. In my country, in Iran, we are one step backwards because the laws are against us and oppressive. من مدت ها فکر میکردم زنانی که در شمال اروپا زندگی میکنند وضعیتشون از همه جا بهتره و دیگه اونا مشکلی ندارن For years I thought that women who live in northern Europe enjoy a good situation and they don't have issues تا اینکه رفتم به فنلاند برای شرکت در یک سمینار مربوط به حقوق زن و در اونجا یک مدالیون به من دادن گفتن اینو لطفا 
به عنوان همراهی با ما به یقه کتت بزن until i went to finland to participate in a women's rights conference there uh, i was given a medallion to wear and they said wear this in support of us این مدالیام یک یورو بود که یک چهارمش بریده شده بود this medallion depicted a euro uh, which uh, one fourth of which was cut off با اونا گفتن که در شرایط مساوی دستمزد زنها یک چهارم از دستمزد مردا کمتره و ما به این اعتراض داریم و این مدالیوم رو برای اون درست کردیم and they uh, said that they had uh, that the re- salary that women received was one fourth less under the same conditions that uh, than the salary that men received and this medallion uh, was a symbol of that compensation. Unfortunately, the patriarchal culture exists everywhere. But I want to explain here that when I say patriarchal culture, I don't mean the male gender. فرهنگ غلطی است که برابری انسان ها رو قبول نداره. What I mean is a wrong culture that does not accept equality of human beings. و این فرهنگ غلط در عرصه سیاسی تبدیل می شود به حکومت غیر دموکراتیک. And in the political arena this wrong culture results in a non-democratic government. Zira dictators ha mi khohan jay baghiye fek konan. Because dictators want to think for everyone. Farhan zan ha har chand qurbaniyan in farhang galat hastan amma mutasifane gah intiqal dehande in farhang galat ham hastan. Faramush takonim. هر مرد زورگویی بالاخره در دامن یک زن تربیت شده. Although women are victims of this wrong culture, but they sometimes transfer and convey. Let's not forget that all patriarchal men were raised by a woman. بنابراین مسئله بسیار مهم آموزشه و به همین دلیل است که من به آموزش دخترها اهمیت بیشتری می دهم تا آموزش پسرها برای اینکه دخترها مادر می و بایستی دیگران را تجربه تربیت کنند. Therefore the most important issue in my opinion is education. I pay more attention to the education of girls than boys because I think girls will be mothers and they will be in charge of raising their children. ما بایستی عملکردهای متفاوت این فرهنگ غلط رو به زنها نشون بدیم و به اونها بگیم که چگونه با این فرهنگ غلط مبارزه کنید. We have to depict the wrong doings of this wrong culture to women and teach them how to fight with it. فرهنگ پدرسالار از هر چیزی برای توجیه خودش سوء استفاده میکنه از جمله از مذهب مذهب رو طوری توجیه می کند و تفسیر می کند که خودش رو به قبولونه A patriarchal culture uses every issue in order to justify its view therefore it abuses religion in order to justify patriarchy بنوان مثال در تمامه ادیان ابراهیمی این زن از که گناه کاره هوا اولین گناهکار بوده که همه ما باید کفاره گناه او رو پس بدیم این تفسیر رو کی کرده For example in all Abrahamian religions it is the woman who is the person who has committed the sin and all women have to pay for the sin that she has committed who has interpreted this religion حالا وقت اونه که مذهب به وسیله زن ها تفسیر بشه And now it's the time that religion be interpreted by women.
Just before we came on stage, I was told that we only have uh, 30 to 40 minutes, so I have to wrap it up. So I'm going to ask uh, an identical question from both of you. Shirinjan, you and I have been outside Iran far longer than, uh, than Miss Ebadi. And I know that in your art, in your photography, in your installations, and in your uh, uh, film, the question of exile is very central. Uh, my question is, uh, in what way, if when you look, we, we are now looking at the magnificent retrospective of your work, in what way do you think the condition of exile has been a positive aspect, has enabled you to do things that perhaps you will not be able to do in Iran? And in what way, simultaneously and paradoxically, also has been uh, a cause of limitation for you not to be able to do certain other things? Well, I think this has been a process, um, and this question of displacement and feeling kind of alienated from your immediate family as, as a young adult um, in a big country um, without any family guidance and the Western education to lack of the Iranian community, the, the Islamic revolution, the breaking of the diplomatic relationship between Iran and the US the move to New York and embracing the international art world and trying to find a little space for myself um, is filled with uh, lots of nostalgia, sadness, pain, uh, but also an ex incredible gift of exposure to art, um, to an international audience, and trying to then formulate my own expression, which is that of a hybrid, uh, that of who I am. Uh, a woman divided between two cultures that are not just different but in total conflict um, and an unresolved relationship with my country and like I said earlier um, my work its essence it goes back to my own anxieties as a human being so I don't want to be speaking bigger than that um, but I do take also my responsibility very seriously in the way that whether I like it or not the way in which I frame certain questions have brought me into an arena that is bigger than my own life. It's not autobiographical anymore. The question of religion, the question of being a woman from that part of the world, um, and protest, um, and the question of exile that many, many of us are facing, and oppression, um, and understanding the fanaticism of the Islamic revolution, Re revisiting our history like I did with Women Without Men. So it's been really a process and each step has been framing new questions, uh, new issues that both I have been very interested as a human being, but also I thought was very pertinent of the time that we lived in. And so it's really impossible to just sort of generalize everything in one way. It's a, it's a lot of things. But I think for her it would be a new experience um, for a lot of young artists coming, well, new uh, artists coming from Iran, how to reinvent yourself in a foreign land. I just can't even, because my career started in this country, but I can just wonder, you know, people like her with such establishment and such tie, how is it? If I may just follow you, you've heard the last point that you said, suddenly you find yourself and your art in a larger context, much beyond your own personal anxiety. Has there ever been a condition that you consciously or unconsciously exercised uh, self-censorship? Um, no, I haven't. Uh, I have never done that. Um, just the opposite has happened that um, at the beginning I was very shy about being very vocal personally. Um, you know, speaking about issues of human rights and issues that the country was going through and I always thought my work was speaking about it so I could just take a back seat. And like you know, and you were with us uh, during the Green Movement. For the very first time, I found that I became totally unafraid and lost that timidness. Um, and so I was very active, uh, like all of us were. Um, but I, I don't believe that, I mean, my work is symbolic and subversively allegorical, so it's all hidden, all my criticism, it's not up in the front anyway. 
but um, I never censored myself. Yeah. Mr. Badi, let's just conclude with uh, asking the same question for, uh, from you. You have been active at the forefront of defending women's rights and human rights and civil rights in Iran before the Islamic Re Revolution, after the Islamic Revolution. Uh, one of the first uh, a woman who, uh, because of uh, denying women the possibility of being judged, you have been active in front of, forefront of opposing that uh, atrocious decision. But over the last almost four years, you have been outside Iran. How would you describe the condition of being away from Iran? Uh, are you more able? Are you more vocal? Are there new possibilities open for you? Or do you miss being there and in the belly of the beast, as it were, fighting the fight? به این دلیل است که در بعد از سال 2009 هیچ گونه فعالیت حقوق بشری در ایران امکان پذیر نیست. The reason that I am outside of Iran is that after the uh, 2009 elections no human rights work can be done in Iran. متاسفانه اکثر همکاران من الان در زندان هستند. Unfortunately, most of my colleagues are in prison now. من بیرون از زندانم برای اینکه صدای مردم کشورم رو به گوش مردم دنیا برسونم. I am out of the prison in order to bring the voice of the people of my country to the people of the world. بالوان مثال بگویم که آمار گالاب غلطه و ما دشمن آمریکایی نیستیم. For example, I want to say that the statistics of Gallup are wrong and we are not enemies of the Americans. But the در کشوری باشه که نتوانید دیگه با اونجا برگردید در دا But it's very painful to be away from a country where your husband is in, where your sister, your brother and all of your family and friends live in. گاهی اوقات من هم مثل هر انسان دیگری ممکنه ناامید یا خسته بشم. Sometimes like any other human being I may feel hopeless or tired. But at this time, I am aware that my colleagues are in prison, and I say to myself, "You have no right to be here, even for one moment. You must be free and stop the movement." But this is when I remember my colleagues who are in prison, and I tell myself, "You do not have the right to become tired." Or to, or to lose hope and not uh, pursue your activities. <laughs> In brief, I want to tell you that my life is not very easy. But I will continue until Iran is free. We are running out of the allotted time that uh, was graciously given to us. Let me just conclude by echoing uh, Mr. Badi and, of course, uh, Shirin Nishad's uh, uh, assessment that of course Iranian people have absolutely no animosity towards uh, American people. I was born in 1951, just two years before the CIA sponsored coup of 1953 that denied my generation the possibility of democracy. But I grew up with utmost love and admiration for American literature, for American cinema, and soon in my teens, with awe and admiration for the civil rights movement in the United States. There are precious 
uh, number of exemplary events in American culture, from civil rights movement to anti-war movement to literature to poetry, that is not just for Iranians, but for around the globe, is exemplary. But unfortunately, beginning with the coup of the CIA-sponsored coup of 1953, to these uh, crippling economic sanctions and threat of war, the threat of which is directly, as Mr. Badi said in his speech, towards the people of Iran and would in fact paradoxically strengthen the ruling regime, is at the issue. I'm, I'm sure that my colleagues join me in thanking you for your patience and gracious attendance here. Have a lovely evening. <laughs> Ma non è una cosa che